In this episode of Mind Pump, we answer fitness and health questions. We actually answer four of them. And then at the beginning of the episode, we do our introductory conversation where we talk about current events, talk about our lives. Sometimes we mention sponsors, uh, but we do always have a lot of fun. Always. Here's what we talked about in this episode. We start out by talking about overly friendly friends. You know, hey. uh, when you got those friends that hug mm. your wife for too long. What's wrong with you, bro? Yeah, stop tickling her. Then I talked about my uh, my brother uh, becoming the best chili pad salesman I've ever seen in my entire life. He was at my family function telling everybody about how awesome Runs in the, family, huh? the chili pad is. Now, chili pads are pads you put on your bed, and they use water, circulating water, to either warm or cool your mattress. You set the temperature, and that's the temperature it stays at all night long. And there's two sides. You can even do one for your husband or wife and one for yourself, dramatically improving your sleep quality. It's very quiet, very, very low EMF because it uses water. It's an amazing product. And we have a massive discount for you. If you go to chilitechnology.com, chili spelled with C-H-I-L-I and then technology.com forward slash mind pump, use the code on the page for the mind pump discount. Then we talked about Walmart and how they're going to start challenging Amazon pretty soon. That's going to be interesting, Ooh. which led us to talk about Jeff Bezos and how he donated a million dollars for the fire that asshole. in Australia. And people complain that he donated a million dollars. So funny. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Then, I, then we talked about Nike and how one of their shoes got banned in races because it makes people too fast. Mm. I'm going to buy a pair later. Uh, and we talked about living robots. Scientists actually have has created robots out of living cells. I think I've seen this movie before. It doesn't end very well. Yeah. Uh, then Justin brought up military animals. I don't know if you knew this or not, but uh, the military actually trains animals to find bombs. And in the past, we've trained animals to drop bombs and kill people. Kind of crazy. bomb. Nah, 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 nah. Then I talked about a recent study showing how women are far less likely to rec receive CPR when they need it than men. Um, and then Adam talked about Taco Bell and how they're going to be paying their, their managers Lots of money. That's Maybe cool. uh, pay money for the quality. Then we got into the fitness questions. Here was the first one. This person wants to know if it's better to lower the weight, uh, to lower the reps and increase the weight by a lot or to increase the weights by a little bit every time they work out. Next question. This person's having a tough time losing weight. Is it because they have a slow metabolism or are they just eating too much food? Uh, we answered that question. The next one was, is it uh, not a good idea to uh, eat or not eat after my workout. If I don't eat, eat after my workout, does it slow down my progress? So we tackle that whole thing about post-workout food. And the final question, this person works in construction, wants to know what they can do to help prevent lower back pain because of all the activity they do at work. Also, this month, MAPS HIT is 50% off. This is by far one of, more, of, our mo of our most popular programs. Now, HIT stands for High Intensity Interval Training. This style of training is short and intense, and it burns more body fat in a shorter period of time than any other workout. So this is one of our best fat-burning workouts that we have. Again, it's really popular. gives you all the exercises, the demos, the videos. Everything's in there. Everything that you need is in there. The program's half off. Here's how you get the discount. Go to mapshit.com. That's M-A-P-S-H-I-I-T.com. Use the code HIT50 for the discount. That's H I I T 50, no space for that discount. Hit them. So, Justin, you were telling me you, got, there's a, you have a buddy that just uh, hugs your wife too hard or too yeah, long. Yeah, don't you guys have one of those? Like, uh, I yeah, feel like I, everybody knows a guy like that. Yeah, I right? do. His name is Adam. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a long hugger. Long for, hugger. Only, yeah. only for oh, our girls. Oh, yeah, only the wives, <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, God. Knows right you. away if they've been working you. out consistently. Yeah. Like, really? Are you paying that much yeah. attention? Wow, look at your hamstrings. Let me touch oh, them. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, you know what, though? The, 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 the guys that you, should, you probably shouldn't worry about are the ones that are, you know, forward friendly. Yeah. in front like of you in yeah, your yeah. face yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I'll, right. I'll flirt with you girl right in yeah. front of you right in front of you yeah, yeah. but that's a compliment yeah, I'm okay with that right. yeah that's a compliment it's complimentary especially if you're not insecure because I'm not uh, insecure I don't care I think it's you know great yeah. right. but it's when you're not around if you're trying to hit outside your league you know, like you should just expect that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have you guys ever had a buddy like that though, where you're just like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've definitely had that. And it's it like literally picked like Courtney up in front of me and like twirls her around and like hugs her real tight. And I'm just like, mm, like what are you doing, dude? <laughs> 
like, <laughs> like okay, like I understand the twirl, the hug, but then this the pickup hug is one thing. Like, yeah, the twirl on. is like, like over the top. Yeah, you, like she's leaving the ground now. Like <laughs> where else are we going? <laughs> That's him being insecure. I had one time. I went this back when I was married to my ex-wife. We went to Italy, and she lived there for a little while when she was uh, I don't know between thirteen and sixteen. So she had old friends or whatever. We go there. And this dude comes over who was friends with her back in the day. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, now I speak Sicilian a little bit. I don't really speak Italian super, super well, especially if it's fast, conversational. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to understand most of it. And this dude completely ignored me and spoke really fast just to her. And it was like I wasn't in the room. <laughs> so about 45 minutes into the conversation, uh, I say in English, uh, I say in English, I said, hey, I said, you need to include me in the conversation because otherwise I'm going to kick your ass. And he goes, huh? I don't understand. And then my ex-wife looks at me like, uh. I'm like, can you translate to him what I just said? <laughs> <laughs> you need an interpreter, buddy? Yeah. Or can you read my body yeah. language? Yeah, I was a little younger. I used to give a little my, more insecure. I used then. to give my buddies the, the green light. The, the rule was, though, that you had to tell me before she did. So mm-hmm. that's the deal. Mm-hmm. Like, if you if you get after my girl, that's uh, cool. Just Game I want to. You got to tell me though beforehand. Yeah. Like, Bef- hey yeah. man, I tried to flirt with your girl. No, no, I, I slept with her. You know what I'm saying? Oh shit. Yeah, well, I'm, and I'm we're cool. If you tell me, but mm. if like you don't tell me, like you're in trouble. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like that's that's a, I have a problem because the way I look at it is like well, it's if, more on her than him. Exactly. If yeah. my if my boy comes out, if if I was dating a, a beautiful girl, right? That. Everybody, or no, all my friends, control are, himself. Right, all, <laughs> y'all, no, it's not even a matter of controlling himself. I, if she's gonna, if she's gonna give in like that to my boy, yeah, yeah, who's yeah. my boy, she's gonna do it with anybody else. So I'd much rather. Yeah, that's a cancer you want to right, extract. I'd, I'd rather my buddy figure it out and then come to me and say, "Yo, hey, you know the girl you're, yeah. you're you're sprung on right now, and you think she's all great and everything like that." Yeah, yeah I worked. I, yeah, uh, dude, we, the, we hooked up last I'll night. I'll tell just you, so you know. I'll tell you what, yeah. though, dude. So, you're like, thanks for doing me a solid. Right, right. that's how I would look at it. Yeah, like, no, I don't. I don't look at it that way i think if, oh you if, would not i both ways is shitty i mean if you're if you're friends with you're really friends with someone and you do that and you go out you know if you came to me and said hey man i gotta tell you something dude like your girl i think she wants to like hook up with me that's different than oh i hooked up with her last night i'm like you went through with it yeah right. wow <laughs> yeah yeah that tells a whole nother you story. are a pure shithead really yeah, yeah. See, i don't know i'm okay with it's it. kind of you yeah. must have done that to someone no 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, I and I was like, "Why? What's the big deal?" I don't think so. No, I don't think. No, I don't think so. I, that was just so. That was like the. That was like the bro rule, right? With all of us guys, it was just, you know, if the if the girl was, if she would, if she would. But sw- what if it's like your wife, like your girl, girl? Well, that's yeah, different. That's the, You're talking on. about girls you were just not. Well, really- I just, I, come on, I'm the guy who's not married, right? I wouldn't. I wouldn't marry a chick that that I. What wasn't sure that she wouldn't do something? Yeah, like I think that. you would have like, like vetted Katr- yeah, at that point, right? Yeah. Exactly. Like I've, uh, Katrina's been in enough situations like that already that I know she's a solid chick. So right. you know that that I wouldn't. I'm not the guy who falls in love in six months and gets married a, a year later and then finds out like, oh shit, she's the type that I don't know about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. No, but so. dude, I've heard story. I have you know I know people personally who like couples where the wife or the husband you know was cheating. And it was a complete, like, shock, yeah. right? you know, like, and I know the people very well and I know, and I, and they obviously the spouse knows them very well. And it's just, it's crazy how, how that can happen where you just get cu- totally blindsided. It, mm. it hurts, it crushes uh, people. I have a friend right now who that, that happened to, she found out of her, <coughs> her husband uh, was fooling around and, um, and he, 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 they were trying for a baby. During the whole process, got her pregnant, still did it, mm. and mm. got caught. And then now, on top of it, I'm gonna do a little rant here, just in case he's listening, because he deserves it. <laughs> he here's the thing that I look. I, I'm very, very uh, understanding because I don't know the whole situation, right? I mean, not always, but sometimes when somebody leaves a relationship, it's they're not the first one to leave. In other words, just, just cheating isn't the only way you can leave a relationship. Right, right. I agree with that. You know, maybe the, there was a bad relationship or whatever. There's a lot of stuff leading up to and it. And I would, I would actually speculate that more often than not, that's the case. Probably. I, think, I mean, there's, of course- You know, like the husband who completely do- ignores his wife. Yeah, there's, then, do- there's dogs in the world for sure. Yeah. yeah. But I know that the one time that I've been cheated on, uh, and I remember people, like we were in two years together. It was, it was the first and only time this that, that I know of, right, that happened to me. Um, you know, of course it stung and yeah, I was upset and we ended things right away. Uh, but I wasn't, I, I wasn't that mad at her. And remember people would, would be like, Oh my fuck her. This and I was like, well, you know, uh, I kind of got what I deserved. Uh, I know that I was completely disconnected in the relationship. 
you know, she, she would go off and she was tra- She was like a you know model for like pre core and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And she used to travel to like the Europa and all over. And I, you know, oh, go do your thing. And she'd go five days. I wouldn't even talk to her or call her. <laughs> like I was so into my work at the time and the relationship was kind of That's what I mean. You kind of left. Right. Like I checked out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I, wasn't a, I wasn't a good partner. And so, yeah. So, you know what? She was on one of these trips and some yeah. fucking dude said the right thing while she was out drinking and doing a thing. And yeah. they hooked up and whatever. Yeah. And so- and I, I, not making an excuse for her, but I also own up the side that I played totally. in that role. Even though I didn't go out and go fuck somebody else, I you know I also I checked out in the relationship. Totally, so. and I get that, and so that's why you know I'm not trying to pass too much. But here's something that I have a difficult time. I have a very very difficult time having empathy for the same friend of mine who's got a kid and one on the way uh, now has pretty much checked out as a father. Now that to me is very very hard to have empathy and forget and to mm-hmm. forgive. If you're a, a man or a woman, but all, more often this happens with men, and you skirt the responsibility of of being there for your children, because now you're really impacting an innocent yeah. soul. You know what I mean? There's a big, they're kids, like they didn't do anything to you, and you skirt that responsibility. Um, it's hard to convince me that you're not a piece of shit. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That's, that's a, that's a tough you, one. How do you try for a baby and then skirt the responsibility? Like what? That's the? what I'm saying. You, yeah. You're you're. Yeah, fuck that guy. Yeah, fake. <laughs> yeah, fuck that guy. Fake. A child. And, and I think See, there's times for shame. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. People forget about Throw that. Throw some shade on that. Yeah, it's some shame. Yeah, that's fuck why, that that's guy. Why, some healthy shade, dude. Why, let you know that, like, nah, we don't agree with yeah, that. That's why I like you guys. You know what I mean? We connect over <laughs> shaming people for the right stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Make sure it's directed properly. Anyway, speaking of, uh, of, of our boys and brothers and all that stuff, so my brother cracked me up uh, the other day. So we're at a big family function, and I told you guys how I I had to I convinced my brother to get the chili pad for his for his house. Right? Told mm-hmm. you guys about this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he got one, and now him and his girlfriend use it. He got the du- the dual sided because his girl, you know, she's- saves a lot of relationships. By the way, I'm, so, I'm sure of it. So <laughs> here's the thing I love about my my brother, and generally my family. My whole family generally tends to be this way. So <laughs> he, he was a pain in the ass to convince. First off, he's, yeah. you know, because he's he's a uh, He's very frugal, even though the kid crushes it. He's an investment baker and he crushes it. He's still frugal with his money. Uh, but And it was hard to convince him. But now that he's convinced, he's like a the best chili pad salesman I've ever seen in my life. He's like an evangelist. <laughs> Bro, now, huh? we were at my family function and <laughs> he was- a discount code. He <laughs> was selling my aunts, my uncles, my cousins. He was doing presentations. You don't understand how great- The whole freaking party. And <laughs> oh, I was wow. like, yeah, I'm like, man, I got to- Remember to get my brother. I'm the same way too, though, right? Yeah. Like if something like, you get excited. Yeah, I get excited about something, right? <laughs> if something, if especially if to like his point, where if you're, you know, you were you were really hesitant and uh, I'm skeptical, uh, and then you then you're convinced, like your paradigm shattered. Oh man, then I become you know evangel- it's evangelizing evangelizing it everywhere. It was funny listening to him like sell it to the different people because the way he would sell it would be different. Yeah, like he's talking to my grandparents and he's like. I sleep so soft. I, I I don't have any stiffness when I wake up. Then he's talking to my cousins. He's like, yeah. I think I'm getting stronger in the gym. <laughs> oh, you know what yeah. I mean? Wow. It's, I'm like, what? It just accelerates. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm like, this is so funny. But dude, that's how it is when, you, when you're like, I can't believe I've been doing it like without this for so long. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and and it, it dawns on you that a product or something like that existed and it could have been used that whole time. You know what it's necessary for? Um, memory foam. Uh, mattresses, memory yeah. foam mattresses. They don't tell you this when you get them. Yes, they're comfortable, but they also are Warm. heat generators. Yeah, mm-hmm. like they ref- they absorb and reflect your heat. Dude, and I like- radiate heat so much. Yeah, and, and yeah. So it just to have it kind of regulate that temperature is is everything, man. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. it's cool for winter time right now too, heating it up. I are mean, you, you I get, mean, are you using it because you got the baby in bed too? Right. I'm not using it right now because I'm not in the bed. I'm so. Could, could <laughs> you you, yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> could you, Katrina is using it. I just right picture now. I just picture yeah. Maximus on your side of the bed, just chilling. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Did I tell uh, you? Guys, finally kicked him out. Yeah. Thanks, did I, Dad. <laughs> did I tell you guys what happened? Uh, so I, I bought my first like uh, online mattress. Never bought a mattress like that before. By the way, I'm, and we're not sponsored by this company well, at all. Sight uh, unseen. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, I did all my research, right? Yeah. So I get online and checked all the. I mean, isn't that how you buy everything now? Yeah. Yeah. Read you, the reviews. It's so. Katrina makes fun fingers. of me for doing this, and I think it's funny that she thinks that's silly. That the the how accurate reviews are it's like maybe when that shit first started it wasn't very accurate but now you've got tens of thousands of people that have reviewed products and if it's 
you know, four and a half plus stars on something with 10,000 plus and reviews. And read them. People are honest. Right. They'll yeah. take pictures. They'll yeah. write read about Read the it. really good one. Read the really bad one. Yeah. Right. And, you know, and there's, a web- there's a website that'll actually verify that. Uh, rate the reviews and will right. tell you, oh, 75% of these seem real. Right, okay, right, right. Yeah. And, and every, I'm sure every company has 100 family members that so they get on there and five star everything right there. But, yeah. you know, you got 10,000 plus reviews yeah. on there that are. You can trust them. Right. And you can. And then, and the one, and I always like to read the negative ones, right? Because if the negative one isn't like negative, enough for me to like you know i really didn't like the shape of it it's a little like a you yeah. know i'm like fuck i don't yeah. give a shit about that yeah. i want to know how comfortable yeah. it is this right? one gave my wife cancer then you don't but, get it. Yeah, yeah right you're like, you're like whoa but i uh i because i've been sleeping in the guest room um i felt so bad so we have we uh, have family that come over a, a lot my sister stays every month right now and sees maximus uh when we travel we always have somebody house sit and, and watch the boys inside the house and Man, I, I called both my uncle and my sister, who probably stayed the most in our guest room, and I apologized. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry that you were sleeping on that fucking mattress. I cannot believe that we did that to you. Like, And it was just that – and I think I can't be alone. Was I know, it an old mattress? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, a, you, everybody does this, right? You move into a new house, yeah. and you've got an extra room, and you have the other – the bed, the bed that yeah. you've had that was – That's the afterthought. Oh, yeah. This bed's been like passed down. and Like when I finally – like where did this come from, right? Because it wasn't mine. It was Katrina. It, it slopes like, in the middle. It's like a hammock. She's like, me. oh, my, my mom gave it to me, and it came for my, my brother who had it for like 20 years. It's like 30 years old. Oh, jeez. Yeah, you could feel the springs in it and everything <laughs> like that. It's like, oh, my God. And they used to throw this little – thing over it so it kind of like disguised how <laughs> shitty it was and we didn't have that anymore and i was like so uncomfortable and i finally just i said fuck it that's it I'm, i bought a hell of a nice mattress i got this company called puffy which by the way we're not are they the ones that fold yeah they come in a box yeah i, I have a I, yeah. I bought one that from a different company that does yeah that. yeah it's weird right you open the box and like and boy was it comfortable now is it memory foam or it's like yeah it's a it's like i have like there's levels to it, right? Doug could pull up the website. We want a puffy uh, mattresses is what it's called. Uh, and again, they're getting like a free commercial from I know. Us. We're not even sponsored. No, no. I, you know, and I did. I, I reached out, cause I was, but I was like, I can't wait. You're like, I said, fuck it. I just mm. paid for the thing. Uh, yeah, that's what it looks like right there. And there's there's like oh, a- nice. Dude, the- They on- have three levels, right? So, so, of course, I got the crazy one. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's- You got the ludicrous speed one? Yes, ludicrous speed. <laughs> it's like sleeping on a fucking cloud. Is dude. it really? Oh, it's amazing. So, the, the, the online mattress market is- Massive. Yeah. Now, when it first started, and I want to say it was Casper. I think it was Casper that was the first yeah, that mattress. Yeah, was the that, disruptor. Yeah, and it did that. It came in a box, right? You know, little the boxes, too. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and, and Casper did that. That was the first one. Yeah. But I remember when they first came out, other people and companies laughed at them. Like, nobody's going to buy a mattress online. People want to yeah, try it out. to come to our store and well, lay on them. But, dude, and, it's become a massive competitor. And to, w- uh, no, for sure. I would have never done this 10 years ago. But again, because reviews are so reliable now, and I could go through and someone would be like, oh, I, I was on a Chatham and Wells for this many years, and now I got this, and it's amazing. I'm like, oh, fuck, that's yeah. a badass bed. Mm-hmm. And you say, this is better? Like, So you know, you, you start to read enough of things like that. Like, okay, I'm willing to take a risk on it. Do you know who, you, you know who makes a decent, you know what kind of salesperson used to? I don't know if it still works like this anymore, but they used to make a lot of money. Mattress salesman. A lot. Oh, yeah. The like markup is amount. massive. Dude, you remember the mattress wars? The, the there was wars that Dude, they I, had. I had a guy uh, that worked apparently. for me, and he sold memberships, and then he got fired because he's an idiot. And then he went to go sell mattresses, and this guy used to send me- I know who you're talking about. You know exactly what I'm I bought about. a mattress from him. Did you? I did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he used to send me- It was pic- always like President's yeah. Weekend and like, you know, those, Bro, those like three-day weekends. He the, used to take pictures of his uh, uh, paycheck. No, no. He would scan his paycheck. It was back in the day. And Mancini's. he faxed me. Yeah. He'd fax me copies of his paycheck yeah. just to talk shit because he got fired. Like, look how much I'm making. And this guy was making like- Ten thousand dollars every couple of weeks, you know, no, or a few made, weeks. They made big money. They're, well, the 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 markup is like more than double, dude. Yeah. So you see a mattress for like five, seven thousand yeah. dollars. You there, could get that like thing way down if you want. Way down. Yeah. I mean, he could drop a few thousand off and still make his commission of like a thousand dollars off of it. Oh, right. it's yeah. it's it's insane. But it's but, crazy that market. See, but that, because ahead. of that, it's now become competitive for like companies like this. Like you know, because yeah, you could get a nice mattress. Yeah, for I mean, way I, less. Oh yeah, like, you could have got the which I imagine even the you know this thing had three tiers. The, the cheapest level uh, for the king was, I want to say like eight hundred bucks. Yeah, I mean, I, I bought the eighteen hundred dollar one. That's like really nice, but that's that's nothing. Oh no, I paid ten grand for my bed when I for my badass bed. That Hold I on for, a second, you spent ten thousand dollars? Yeah, Chatham and Wells Oof. handcrafted bed when it, that was the shit back then. Like now, it's not even that company doesn't even exist anymore. <laughs> bro, the, the Cadillac of beds. Bro, it was. It made love to me, bro. 
<laughs> it did. Oh, you spent ten thousand dollars on a bed. <laughs> Made love to me. Oh my god! It, it, it cuddled you into the nethers. Oh, huh? for a yeah. bachelor, bro, that was a game changer. You come <laughs> into my house as a bachelor. It was all clean. It was all nice, and then. You, you sat on my bed. It was game over. It was, I think like, if they oh, sit, I'm staying here. I think if a girl comes over and sits on your bed, no matter what, <laughs> it's game over. That's probably a game oh, over. No, it's for sure. That's hilarious. I don't know if I was a chick and I came over to some yeah. bachelor's house and I sat on yeah. like some fucking futon. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm out of here. See, if, if any of us had a rotating bed, I feel like it has to be Adam. It rotated, <laughs> right? Do you remember old hotels? The the beds would have a little quarter thing next to it. Whoa, you'd put bro, the that's hell <laughs> <laughs> That's before Justin I's time. That yeah, was yeah, that's, that's that's only like three years older than you guys. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You know one thing that I look out for now that I had zero uh, awareness about back in the day was the the chemicals and fumes that mattresses yeah. give off. Yeah, that's like a thing. You know that, right? There's all kinds of toxic chemicals. Yeah, because you 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 buy a bed, you smell it, and like you're sleeping on it. You know, so yeah. now they make these organic beds and made out of organic latex and all sort of stuff. Yeah, that'll be an emerging market for sure. It still it already is. It's yeah. already a, a growing market. Anyway, dude, that article uh, on Walmart, crazy, right? Holy, look I mean, out! Brilliant. Good time to buy. Dollar yeah. uh, 115. Yeah, 115 is where the stock's at, so are, it's reasonable. Are they so, at 115 right now? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. unaware. What was the article? So check this out. So uh, and they've been talking about this for a while. So we'll see what happens and how this plays out. But um, everybody's always said if, if there's anybody that has a chance to rival Amazon and the momentum that Amazon has, it's Walmart. Mm -hmm. uh, and Walmart has 4,700. Uh, locations in the United States. Basically, they are... They're the largest employer. There is a Walmart within 10 miles of everybody. Yeah. yeah. So that's how... I mean, and Amazon has 110 uh, warehouses for distribution. So that, I mean, the way they get to you the next day with Prime and everything like that is because they got 100 and something warehouses mm -hmm. all over the United States. Walmart is taking 4,700 of their locations. They're taking 1,600 of their 4,700 locations and are turning them into distribution warehouses. Yep. Boom. And they're going to make a run. And they and they have their own cloud, so they don't have to rely on Amazon's cloud. Right. So now you buy something on Walmart because here's the thing that Walmart has that is uh, that is amazing. <laughs> the, the their distribution channels, their ability to deliver their their, their locations, mm -hmm. they are superior to Amazon. In fact, I forgot what natural disaster it was. Can't remember what it was. It was a huge natural. It might have been Hurricane Katrina, mm -hmm. where people couldn't get water. Walmart stepped in and was able to wow. do it. Now, is this just nationally, or are they internationally that? Prevalent? They are international, but nationally for sure. Yeah. And so, what does this mean? This means that maybe Walmart can get to the point where they can deliver to you within hours. Right. And they do that, and Amazon's dead. Well, I wouldn't. Whoa, be careful Whoa, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. careful. Bro, there. we're careful. talking about. Bro, if you could buy, <laughs> yeah, yeah, hold on yeah. a second. If yeah. you could buy Have products, you seen him lately, Jack. If, if you could buy products for competitive prices to Amazon, and the difference, the only difference is, I buy it on Walmart, I get it here in a few hours versus I get it here tomorrow. That's a that's a game changer. Well, I, they do that. Amazon Prime does that. Not on most Same products. Day. Not on most products. Well, I'm okay. So you're you're assuming that Walmart will be able to do that with most. I doubt they're going to be able to do it with most. It'll be it. There it. They'll be competitive still. It's that's that's. Uh, I I think it'll just be amazing if they stay alive. Mm. I mean, Amazon is on on, on a, a a rampage of just putting companies out of business, and the only reason why I think. Uh, Walmart's been able to survive is is because of how big it is and because they've been able to sustain all this. And during the times when the economy was really bad, Walmart was on the rise because of it, how cheap it is to go buy things. So everybody that was spending extra money before was heading over there. So they they definitely managed during this time. And because they're so big, they do have a chance. But uh, I would never say that Walmart has a chance of putting well, uh, Amazon uh, out. Well, you, don't forget, here. Amazon doesn't doesn't chart, so I don't know what Walmart's uh, what it will look like for them. Like if they have like a but prime Amazon deal. Did, well, Amazon you, part of why Amazon's so amazing, aside from that, it can come the same day or the next day, is also you don't pay if you have Prime for shipping. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you have so prime. Walmart will have to do that also oh, totally. if you're going to compete. So you're not you're going to be able to get it there as fast, well, and you're also going to not have well, to pay. Well, look here, okay. Amazon as of uh, in 2018, their total revenue was 232 billion dollars. I have right here. Uh, in Walmart in 2018 was 500 billion dollars. Uh, in 2019 it says 400 514 billion dollars are extremely profitable and they're still growing. So Walmart is a is the monster. So if anybody is going to go up to Amazon and have a ha have the potential to 
you know, knock them down a little bit. Uh, mm. It's Walmart. I don't think of, I can't think of any other company no, 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 that could even come close. There's yeah. not. There's not. No, any, there they would gobble up anybody else. Uh, so no, it's going to be. I think they're a good buy. And I do too. And, I think at one hundred and fifteen dollars a share, uh, you know, they also pay dividends. So if you buy Walmart stock, if I'm not mistaken, okay, I'm not an investor. So there's your there's your disclaimer. I'm a trainer, <laughs> uh, I'm, but I'm pretty and, sure, and we're wrong sometimes. Yeah, but I'm per- <laughs> I'm pretty sure. We talk outside our lanes. When though. you buy Walmart stock, you get paid dividends. So it's a it's one of those stock that's not super volatile. You buy it, you actually get income every single year. Um, so it's like an income producing stock. It's not just speculating on the price of it. Um, so it makes it a good, I Amazon mean, is very are, expensive. Are, yeah. Is Walmart right. still the, the leader in organic, uh, yes, yes, yes. 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 produce, which is, that's interesting too. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I yeah. wouldn't, I'd never assume that. It's their sheer size. Yeah. They're just, they is. are massive. You know, speaking of Bezos, you know that, uh, he donated a million dollars to the, um, the fires. Where? In to Australia? Australia. Oh, did he really? Yeah. That's he, that, he found that under the couch. Well, okay. You know I mean? so He's so rich, he just looked on the funny couch. Funny you say that. Already. Funny you say that because why I was bringing it up was because he got a lot of shit for that. Because he only donated? Yes. Yeah. How, how do you feel about that? I think that's a stupid... I do too. You're such an asshole if you... If, if you, you give him, shame him for that. Yeah. Like, okay, fine. He's got a lot of money, but he also didn't have to do anything. Yeah. It's like it, okay. Here's here's your wait, example. I'll wait, give you an example. Explain that. So he got so, uh, shit for, for so, donating money. So okay, Bezos makes so much money. Okay, you can, you can mathematically break it down. Okay, by the minute, right? What mm-hmm. he's making. Yeah. And a million dollars is like one minute of work, right? Or a couple minutes of work for mm-hmm. him. So mm-hmm. the the idea of him throwing a million dollars at a, a a huge problem like the fires in Australia is some people a lot of people got online and were like hammering him over it because it's chump change to that's him. such an asinine way of looking it at is it. and these are angry okay, there it is look at that. per hour he makes a whopping eight million nine hundred and sixteen nine hundred sixty one dollars wow eight million dollars every hour that's How crazy is that even possible so dude? right so, so in other words in other words he like hooked him up with like five minutes of work yeah. so well okay fine okay here's a deal and, and, and let me put it in perspective for people i, I agree with you number one you are a jealous uh insecure uh probably virtue signaling person because i would like to see how many of these people who complained donated themselves probably none of them right they all sit around you know talking all this shit but they have way more money than a lot of poor people do in the world. Number two, imagine, let's say you make, what's the average person uh, in the U.S. make per hour? I don't know. What, what is it? What's the average salary? 50000 a year? 60000 mm. So what are you making? You know, what, what is that per hour? 30 bucks? Someone do the math for me. Yeah, anyway, I'm, imagine I'm you make- not ma- your guy. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> you be, you, okay, fine, whatever. You, you're, 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 you're making 50, 60 grand a year, average person. You see a homeless person outside of the grocery store. You give him a dollar. He looks at you and complains to you and yeah. says, you're a piece of shit for yeah, giving a dollar. How dare you? Yeah, how would yeah, you where's feel? Where's my 30 bucks? Like, yeah. fuck you, man. I just gave you a dollar. Right, I didn't right. have to give you anything. Yeah, no. Yeah, I, just, I, yeah, I agree. That's, that's, that's why I thought right it was an interesting conversation because I thought that's this is funny that people are- getting pissed off that somebody actually gave money without oh. knowing everything else. Mm. So that's stuff. You know, another one that's uh, stirred up controversy right now is uh, Nike. So Ooh, still. Yeah. Well, no, this is something totally different, though. Oh, so yeah, yeah. they so brought up something totally different. They are, they are talking about banning a shoe. So why? It, of their own shoe? They're not banning a shoe. Like uh, the, a shoe is going to be banned from certain sports, like running. So, for example, is, this the, uh, is the Olympic Committee? Gonna it's ban? the it's a it's Vapor Fly is the type of shoe, and you guys mm. have seen these before. Taylor used to rock these. He's got them. They had look. They had the kind of the big foamy soles. They're a running shoe, mm. and they have this technology in inside the foam that is kind of springs you forward. Wow. And so here they are, right there. There's so it a, captures kinetic energy and somehow uses oh, it again and springs yeah. it back. Yes. Wow. So Nike's so, record-breaking Vaporfly. Yes. Uh, that's the one that they're going to ban. And it's it's these it's the organizations that do like mm. world championships with marathons and stuff. So, so a little performance enhancement. Wow. You are about to sell more shoes than you've ever yeah. sold in your whole life. Oh yeah. Just like the Jordan shoe. Right. right that's yeah. amazing for them. But now, what do you guys think of organizations banning that? Because it's a, like a performance dance. What's your thoughts? Uh, well, I have a thought. I want to hear what yeah, you guys. So think. here's what I first off. Here's what I think. I think it's uh, it's great because it confirms all my childhood beliefs and shoes. You know, when I was a kid, uh, I yeah. go to the store with my mom. I was like testing out the shoes, see how fast they are. Yeah. And then when I got older, I'm like, they don't make you faster. But yeah. apparently, yeah, they do. all of a sudden, they're magical at that point for you in your mind. Yeah, apparently they do. So thoughts on the ban? Um, I mean, look, they banned. Uh, there was a sweat. There was a swimsuit that was banned in the Olympics at one point because it was. You know, making people break records. 
they're just trying to to stay ahead of the technology. But what sucks is the guys who there was the world record uh, setting run was set in those shoes. I read. So the guy who broke the world record. Well, why why not leave it open for everybody to use it? So I'm on your page, Justin. Yeah, and here's why. Okay, because uh, everybody's gonna use it. And that and that that and well, that, that creates a new market. It does. It does, and it's fair. It's not like the shoes yeah. unaffordable and only certain people can have yeah, it. It's and not it, exclusive. If we can go run down right now and buy a pair of these. Okay, yeah. so every runner that's competing can go out and get a purchase. And hey, kudos to Nike for the, coming out with the technology. They, they're yeah innovating and. I remember when I watched that TED talk that completely shattered my paradigm the about one minute mile. Yeah. yeah about the evolution of sports yes. and all the records that we've seen broken over the last thirty years now. And they give most of the credit to technology. Yes, I tracks and shoes. Yeah, I would have yep. thought. I would have said if you would have asked me, I would have bet my my bankroll that it had it to do with steroids, steroids and, and all the and, and training. It, yes, and nutrition, all that. No, and uh, almost everything was attributed to the evolution of uh, technology with gear, with the, the track, sw- the, the swimsuits, field, yeah, the caps, the mm-hmm. shoes, the track, the courts, the the pool, even how the water comes out of the pool for swimmers, like. All that stuff is what has evolved uh, us in sports so much. So this is no different to me. This is no different than a, a better track, yeah. a better swimsuit cap, a better pool. Yeah, that's that'll, where I'm at. Yeah. So yeah. and and it's and anybody can go buy it and purchase it and use it. So why the fuck not let it happen? If I if I was the Nike, if I was in charge of Nike and that news came out, oh, I, I would have so thrown the, the biggest celebra- celebration of all time. Oh, you're so you pumped. can't think of better. There is no better uh, the advertising than your pro- your shoe getting banned because you know the fa- first it makes you too fast. Do you know the first big yeah. example of something like that? <laughs> no. The the Jordan Jordan yeah, ones. Jordans. Wait, did Jor- Jordan one? They got banned because they it was got too ban- effective. No, 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 no. That's not why they got banned. Oh, okay. They got banned because they were red, so the NBA would not allow them. But the right. way they, but the way they marketed it was that it was they were too good, too right? good, too hot for everybody too, else. Yes, to too use. hot for yeah. NBA. <laughs> yeah, and so every fucking kid ran out, and but that's what blew up. The first now, joint. where do you draw the line? Like, for example, in baseball, uh, <clears throat> you know, aluminum bats or juiced balls right. or, or those cameras. Now they're catching them. Yeah, like, like because cameras. at some point, technology is going to get really crazy. At some point, you might have nanotechnology on your shoes that springs every time you take a yeah, step. I guess you got to keep up, man. You know, yeah. I mean, who knows? Yeah, just keep wearing better technology. Just keep up, man. Yeah, it's, hu- they got that. We yeah. got that. Hover shoes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you just, <laughs> you just, Flying across the no, you bring line. up you bring up a good point yeah. that they have that, to draw the line somewhere. I agree. I don't think this is where you draw it though. Mm, S- yeah. Some fucking foamy shoes. Okay, come on, yeah. get out of here. With well, that. what they did, the way it worked was they they effectively banned the shoe, but really what it was is they made a rule on the how thick the in, the sole had to be. So that effectively banned the Nike mm. Vaporfly or whatever. Yeah, but it wasn't specifically to ban that shoe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They I made mean, a new rule that It said, was, though. It was. But they, the way they wrote it in the rule Right, book. right, of course. But I yeah. mean, that it just, so someone figured that out. I mean, mm-hmm. that's awesome. I think it's awesome that somebody figured out that, okay, if we put this type of foam in there, we add some carbon in there, we make it a millimeter thicker, we're going to get this much more propulsion that could shave, you know, one one hundredth of a second yeah. off of, you know, I mean, fuck. Is that swimsuit still the case, like, for the Olympics? Like, do they still, like, ban, like, certain types of, like, really tight, like, swimsuits that keep everything super aerodynamic? Yeah, what it was, I think it was, like, a like a swimsuit that was, like, pants. It was, like, spandex pants. Mm-hmm. Um, so it wasn't just the Speedo. Yeah. And it was the design of the swimsuit uh, that oh, reduced right. drag. Yeah. And it's interesting. I remember, Adam, when you were when you were going through your, uh, your swimming kick mm-hmm. um, and you were talking about how when you're doing freestyle for example the legs you're just you're basically they're doing not doing very much you're yeah. dragging you're pulling them right and so it makes perfect sense right oh, the, yeah. the more you can make your legs glide through the water uh the faster or even be. like a swimsuit that allows you to float a little bit would make a big difference yeah oh yeah for sure yeah yeah so a if, it, yeah, oh, so yeah, if it gives you a, it gives you a little bit of float, a little all you got to do is just pull your body basically yeah. the other side. no you're right i mean I, there there has to be some sort of a someone has to draw the line somewhere or else you just who makes like webbed gloves what happens yeah. when someone makes you know rocket shoes you know what i'm saying and well like, i mean <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, you start adding like engines and shit it's like come on i would like i here? mean i would like to see a sporting event that allow that you know, with equipment is kind of like limited, 
but they allow them to take whatever drugs they want. Let's see how let's see how hard we can let's I, see how hard we can push the murder ball. ball. Yeah, yeah, let's see what happens. I mean, I agree too. What you the, and the truth is no, you know, no drugs banned. Nobody nobody's watching the 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 drug free one. I mean, that's like, I've talked about that with football, right? Like we've talked yeah. about like what do you do? Like it, it, steroids are so rampant. How do you how do you pull back on it? It's too late. Yeah, it's too late, right? So what you what do you potentially open up a league that is completely well, drug tested, no drugs whatsoever? They're super they're super strict on it. But the reality of it, and why they would never do that, is because no one would watch Doesn't it. Make Haven't any money. we sort of seen an example of that with like Pride versus the UFC, and yes. like how it was like, it, you know, it was understood that like it, it wasn't against the rules, Dude, but they didn't like necessarily put it in the rules. I, that re- I remember when Vanderlei Silva, who was murdering people in Pride, went to the UFC, and he's like. Oh, he lost like twenty pounds. What yeah, happened? Yeah. Or what's his He's name? Tiny. Uh, what's his name? Kickboxer Dutch uh, dude with the kind of spiky cool. hair. He still fights. Oh, yeah. He was jacked in pride. Then he yeah. fights in UFC and he's uh, God. What is his name? You guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah, right? I know who you're talking. I about. do too. Yeah, uh, Crow Cop. No, 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 no. Although he got smaller too. No, I know who you're talking. about. You know exactly what I'm yeah, talking yeah, about. I'll, I'll come up with a name in, in just a second. Anyway, I got I read a crazy article the other day. You guys want to, want to get freak out a little bit? Mm-hmm. Yes. So scientists have created the first. Living robots. <laughs> okay, now explain that. Okay, Fine. Is that, so well, yeah, what well, define living? So a team of researchers took cells from frog embryos and turned them into a machine that can be programmed to work as they wish. A programmed living being. So they literally took cells, put them together, and programmed them to do what they want. So it's a organic, carbon-based com- machine. It's a robot, in essence. Okay, now what's scarier? Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> like a biological programmed thing, or Is there a picture um, of this? A mechanical, you know, metal. Yes, thing. they were very, very small, so it doesn't look like anything cool or crazy or whatever. But here's what the article says: they could dispatch the tiny xenobots to transport medicine around a patient's Xenobots body. Xenobots, assemble! Or clean up pollution from the oceans. Oh, they can also heal themselves if they're damaged. Yeah, look like space bears. Yeah. No, uh, oh, more space bears. <laughs> around now. You remember the space? I can't even remember the name now yeah. of the animal because <laughs> he has space, yeah. What was they called? What are they called? Bear? They're not. They're called uh, space bears. They're water bears. Water bears. <laughs> but yeah, they have they're, another. They're in, apparently, they're on the moon. Damn, you're screwing me up, dude. But it looks like them, doesn't it? It does. These but, things are tiny. But dude, it's, it's so they're starting on the cellular level. Yes, and they take the cells, they put them together, and they program them. Dude. So they they do what they want. But you know what that means. And it well. I tell you what, here's what I love about sci-fi. Sci-fi it means a lot of cool, bro, a lot of cool sci-fi movies. Apparently, coming. there needs to be more sci-fi movies because it's a warning. Yeah. Like, stop yeah. playing God, you yeah. dumbasses. Yeah. Water, water bear, tar- tardigrade, tardigrade, is tardigrades. Yeah. Water yeah, bears. Thank you. Not space. They do look like little bears. <laughs> not space. When you say space bears, I yeah. imagine like a, a like a bear in like a well, space suit with a laser. Speaking geek. of animals, this is way less scary than that. I thought it was actually pretty cool. But like, I was talking to my sister-in-law actually, like when we were up in Tahoe, and she was like, "Tell me about one of uh, her clients that she had that was." Actually actually a part of the process of military training for animals like say a bottlenose dolphin or mm. a a sea lion in the navy and like they use them f- and they 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 teach them how to basically look for like invading like like divers and look for like mines and look for like all kinds of stuff so, you like, know, on ships now you know that's been happening for a long time right yeah. so in world war 2 um there was there were plans and then in the cold war they even examined this in the cold war we examined all kinds of crazy shit but in world war 2 there were plans to they would put birds in uh planes in the nose of the plane and then they would uh, the 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 birds were were trained to peck at a ship, so they'd launch these planes, fill them up with with bombs. Then the bird would peck at this image of the ship, and as as the camera moved, they'd peck at it, and that essentially guided the plane. So it was a heat seeking plane in World War Two. Explain this again. Okay, <laughs> so there's they, bir- they, there's birds in it, the nose of, a, nose of the plane. There's a there was a, something in the plane where the bird was uh, trained to peck at the uh, ship. So they'd look through the window, they'd peck at the ship, but their pecking directed the plane, and it would become like a like a like a, a, a guided missile. So they'd launch these planes, the bird would peck at the thing, and then if the plane went too high, the you know the bird pecked down because there's the ship and there's the ship, and boom, they'd aim right at and just blow up ships. It, now, okay, what's the idea behind that? Because the, the the bird's hell? perception of like it's looking. Birds have great vision. That's yeah. what I'm saying. So, okay. so the, they're literally uh, guiding the plane to crash into. 
the were, and this these, is, were these manned planes? No. Why would they do that? I'm if like, a what are we talking about here? Okay. Kamikaze? That's why I was yeah. confused. Like Thomas, no, there's no people on there, so oh, the birds okay. would do this. Okay. And then uh, bottleneck dolphins, they've been training for a long time. Yeah. To find ocean. So the the beluga whale as well. Did you hear about that with with Russia? How no. they were like messing with them. So they same thing. Like they were looking for like mines, all these kinds of things. But they also trained them to kill uh potential like divers and people in the water like they would kill their enemies wow like, dude <laughs> getting whales to kill people this is like uh, what the hell's going on yeah it's like that co the comic book what's his name uh, leave it to the russians though yeah, yeah like, oh oh here's it so it was, so pigeon guided missiles this was in uh world war ii and then you know what else they did they were going to strap uh incendiary like bombs or little little tiny bombs on bats they were going <laughs> to this was World War II. They were going to release Brilliant. hundreds of thousands of bats over Japan. Yeah. Then the bats, because what bats, he's called Bat Bomb. And what bats do oh, fucking bat bombs, is dude. bats, that's, that's badass. bats they, they find like underhangs. They go underneath like the roofs of, of, of homes and stuff. And the way that the Japanese homes were constructed would have been perfect. So we release thousands of so, bats. Nah, 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 They've got nah, nah, these little nah, nah, bombs nah, 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 strapped nah, 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 nah. to them. They go bat and they hide bomb. They hide underneath the house and <laughs> everything catches fire. That's brilliant because nobody gives a shit if you kill a bat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so ugly as like, hell. Like I'm concerned about dolphins, right? Like so you strap you strap a couple dolphins up with some like rockets and shit and then they get, they die. <laughs> no. You know people are going to be fucking uh, Pete is going to be all over your ass, yeah, but you kill some bats on oh, the way to cute. Yeah. winning a war. You would have put a you would have put a rocket on a dolphin. Those are flying rats. You put a torpedo maybe, but a rocket on a dolphin doesn't Sound very, it's made for Rocket water. Dolphins. Yeah, dolphins are made for water. Yeah. It's just like <laughs> oh, come on, we have underwater rockets, yeah. bro. Yeah. You could do that. Come no, on. That's, that scientist got fired. Yeah. We've designed a space missile. Same guy who put the screen door by, in the submarine. by a fish. I got an idea. Let's put bears on the moon. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's fuck great. Yeah, good job, Johnson. Anyway, anyway, so I was reading this article on uh, CPR. So you guys know what CPR is, right? Cardio respiratory, uh, cardio pulmonary. Right. I don't know what the hell it's really, for. they don't even like. <laughs> Breathe into your mouth anymore now. The protocol is just doing the compressions. Yeah, what's up with that? They've I've taken a CPR certification probably a hundred times. Well, I mean, call them STDs, man. I yeah. guess. Look at that's, rocket that's dolphins. The main importance. Thank you, Doug. Bro, that's a thank video for, game. Thank you for getting my back there. Yeah, that's a video game. Rocket yeah. dolphins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you see one just exploding. What up. an ineffective oh. weapon. Oh. Terrible. Wow. A anyway, so I'm reading this article <laughs> on uh, on CPR and uh, <laughs> look at that one. Dude, dude. I'm sorry. Sorry, messing dude. everybody oh, up. Oh, you got me on that one, Doug. And uh, this is crazy now. So statistically speaking or uh, percentage-wise, a woman who needs CPR in public is uh, a lot less likely to receive it than a man. So if a woman goes down mm. and she's like, you know, whatever, and oh my God, she's not breathing, somebody needs to give her CPR, less likely than if it's a guy. Did they say why? Well, well I can yeah, guess why. Because like, you don't want to be a perv about it. You that's, know? that's 100%. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Where do like, I put my hands? People are so, men are so afraid oh, of wow. you know inappropriately touching a woman or having people think that that's what's happening that they're less likely to get CPR. It's so crazy. And, and there's been like lawsuits and things for people like, they had to actually create a law for that, right? Like the Good Samaritan law, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, where it's like people have helped people in the past and then get sued later. And mm -hmm. it's like, dude, what the fuck is wrong with people? Yeah, it says that they're they're also more like, they're more likely to die as a result from it. That's pretty crazy. They're, they're, the men are 1.23 times more likely to get CPR yeah. From a bystander than women. Well, isn't which, the isn't the uh, the survival rate of CPR really low? Anyways, like if someone were if someone were yeah, to, it's better than zero. No, no, you're right. Of course. You know? Have saying. you guys ever had a, an incident like that where you've I, had to like apply emergency help? Almost. Yeah. I almost had to do CPR. Somebody went down in the gym. I and they passed out, which happens a lot. So you don't freak out initially when someone passes out because it probably it happens at least I don't know every other month. Uh, so. I, you know, of course, people say, oh, my God, so-and-so passed out. So you walk over there, and the first thing you do is you check to see if they're breathing and, uh, you know, check to see if they have a pulse. And this person um, had I, neither. Yeah. And so I'm like, call 911, and I'm like, you know, I'm going to do uh, CPR. So we're checking. Look at you, protocol and everything. Now we're checking to make you, sure. go call 911. Yeah. The training kicked in. Yeah, of course, dude. <laughs> Of course, yeah. you know. Yeah. What a great opportunity. Your health like ambassador is here. Yeah. Health yeah. ambassador. You know I mean? Sal DiStefano you know at what, your service. You know how much personal training I would have sold right after that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, yeah. I'm the trainer that saved somebody. 50%. Yeah. Anyway. You. Call 911. Anyway, so they, they called 911, and we're checking the pulse, making sure that there isn't one. And then I, th I, th I think, oh, wait, I think there's a pulse. I think they're breathing. 
by the time we are, are because you got to be you got to be sure you don't want to go and do CPR on someone who's got a pulse and stuff. Right. So as, as while we're checking now, remember the twenty four that was on Santa Teresa is across the street hmm. from the hospital. Right. They ambulance got there so fast. By the time I was ready to start doing CPR, yeah. Yeah. they run in the room and I was like, oh, thank you. Yeah, I haven't had that. But I did have a, an incident though when I was at this restaurant where a lady outside, I could, it was so crazy because like out of the corner of my eye, I could just see, you just notice something that's off and like she was up and kind of like looked pale and was like kind of doing the universal choking sign. And, uh, and then I just like immediately just beelined it over there, just not even thinking. And nobody around there was doing anything. She's like, ah, 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 like wow. holding herself. And so, yeah, so I had to do that, the, the maneuver, you know, the from Heimlich back, maneuver? Heimlich. And, and then, like, thankfully, it didn't take too many because, like, sometimes I guess I've heard people have had to break ribs and have had really had to, like, smash Did in it there. work? It worked. Yeah, she spit it, pop, it out. popped it out, and then I, it was so weird because I don't remember anything after that. Like I just, I got like more emotionally involved in this whole thing. Mm. I was like, "Oh my god, this lady's gonna die!" Like in my head, I, th I thought she was gonna die, mm. and so that I had to go sit in the cooler for like an hour after that. I was like, I was like so amped. Wow. Yeah. Speaking of rest hero. Speaking of restaurants, uh, since Taco Bell is a super fancy restaurant. Uh, did you? <laughs> Restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best transition I could come up with. That one right there. That's good. Uh, did you see what uh, the Taco Bell announced as far as uh, raising their general managers up to? No. I thought this was kind of neat. So, a general manager of Taco Bell, somebody who manages one location. Correct. Okay. Hundred K a year. What? Gee, right. It's you make a six viable figures career to manage a you Taco do, Bell. You do now. It's new. Wow. Yeah. They so av on average countrywide it used to be between fifty and eighty on the top tier. Now everybody is up to a hundred. They're moving. Does everywhere. that mean a bean burrito is now two two dollars and fifty cents <laughs> instead of a no. dollar whatever? No, I think it's a it's a strategy yeah. that they're which is interesting and I'm really curious to watch. Uh, is you know they. The talent pool has been declining in fast food management, and you know, and, and everybody's been cutting, 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 and becoming more efficient and AI and all these things like that. That they are kind of going back to let's see if we could actually get some really qualified, good people to come in here and run these facilities and make a difference. Hmm. And uh, you know, that's interesting, man. Hundred hundred thousand dollars a year. For to GM a, no. a, a taco now, mind you, I know like so. I have a, a client of mine. First of that, all, it's a lot of work. Dude. Yeah, yeah. No, I have a client of mine that a lot of work. right, right. They 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 manage several million. Like one location makes several million dollars a year, and you've got a you know quite a few employees that manage probably somewhere between thirty plus employees, and you got a lot of moving parts, and you got food and all that shit. So I know that it's got to be kind of a nightmare, but still a hundred k. You know what this reminds me of? Do you remember the movie Demolition Man? Yeah. yeah. You remember, remember the Taco Bell was the fancy restaurant in there? Uh, Do you guys yeah. remember that? I see. <laughs> you know? Now that you say there, that, right? Yeah. yeah. Wesley yeah. Snipes. Was yeah, there. Wesley Snipes. Was, that's actually a good movie. Classic. Yeah, it was a great... You know, there was one thing in that movie that I, I wish like they would really Judge invent. Judge Dredd better. That was terrible. Yeah. Was, remember was when, awesome. they, when he crashed the car, but and the car filled up with foam before like, oh, and yeah, he yeah. would like it, you know, and, the, and he was stuck in there? Yeah, I feel like a big cannoli. I mean, we kind of do that with the with the bags now. Almost yeah. all your new cars now have airbags that shoot out of every which, which way and direction. They're getting super safe mm -hmm. when it comes to that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. First question is from Red Surf Bus. Is it better to drop a ret rep and increase weight by a larger amount or progress with smaller fractional plates? Uh, either. They're both... Uh, they're both good. Um, now, here's the thing. I've I've experimented. Have you guys ever experimented with adding a quarter to a half pound mm -hmm. in your yeah. workouts on an incremental slow basis? Mm -hmm. What was your guys' experience? You no, know, it's it's a it's a very smart strategy. Most people don't have the patience to do yeah. it, but it's actually a great strategy. Now, I think that's the key there. It's like it really like it, you have to be patient and you have to like be proactively like doing that like every workout. You're thinking about that and like. I don't know. I, I went through a phase where I did that, and it did, you know, pay off for me. But it was, it felt like more of a, a struggle to now do the, it. Now the problem is that the fra the plates that you get now, conventional plates, don't go lower than two and a half pounds. So that means if you add one on each side, yeah. you're going up by five pounds, which is sounds small, but it's still a, a substantial amount to go up. Um, but at one point, I used to have these collars that you put on the sides of the bar, and the collars themselves weighed like you know half a pound or whatever. And so I'd go up by like a pound at a time. Mm. That really was actually quite remarkable. I got pretty good results by by doing that. But anyway, to answer the question, I think there's value both ways. Here. Yeah, totally. Either yeah. way, you're you're adding 
Um, you, you know, weight. You're adding volume in the in the in the form of adding weight uh, to yeah. your workouts. It's progressive resistance, regardless of how you do it. Both ways have total value. Both yeah, I think there. something like if, if I really got into like something like powerlifting, I, I would totally like apply this this method like more and be more detailed because I'm writing down like very specifically like each time I'm trying to progress and I'm writing down my results and then what I've added on. You know, like e even if it's fractional, I'm adding that on. So it it totally adds up over time. Mm -hmm. People always want to want us to tell them what is better, this or that, and. Usually it's either right. or both. It's, and it's almost always that, right? I, I'm trying to think of a case when it hasn't been. I mean, there's there's some examples, I guess, that are, are that are very obvious and extreme. But for the most part, like, it's it's rarely ever an either or. It's, you know, it, whichever one that you probably do most of the time, the other one is super beneficial at that point because your body has got used to that and adapted to that. So doing it, doing something different is going to add more value. So, and both have value. So there's, and... I think why this and this is part of what annoys me about our space is that you know you you take something and you could separate this right we could totally separate these two you things create two camps immediately right we could yeah. do a study we could go for six weeks and we could show this and control all these things and go like oh well it looks like that the group A that incrementally went up you know gained you know one percent more strength than group B yeah. but the truth is if group A continues on doing the same thing as group A forever then switching things up and being group B would actually probably be the most beneficial thing. So, And that kind of falls suit, I think, with almost yeah. everything we discuss. Now, th now that being said, uh, just to be completely honest, um, I and I don't know what this is, uh, but I rarely ever add w anything under 20 or 50 pounds on the bar when I want to go up. I, I tend to <laughs> – I just don't like adding small plates. Maybe yeah. it's an ego thing. Uh, I don't I, know. I get but, caught up in that too. So I, I know we're not alone with that. It's just one of those things you just kind of like pick your like your, your next amount, and sometimes twenty. Something you just know how you know you can ramp it up I, like, small, based on the feeling of where the, you're at. The smallest amount is twenty pounds, which is not small. That's a big jump. Yeah, it is a big. Jump. And what I do is I wait till my reps get high. Yeah. And then I say, oh, I can add twenty pounds, and I slap you know twenty pounds. We always. used to say so if, for chest, back, and legs. Okay, so your big muscle groups, like you're not allowed to do anything less than a quarter. That was like a, yeah, that yeah, was the only tens way you're and going. five were for arms, bro. Yeah, so, exactly. Like, if somebody went so out, and got, stupid. yeah, if somebody slid a ten on a on a squad, it'd be uh, you, we'd laugh at each other and be like, pure, you can't do pure that. ego. No, that's but to, totally wrong. But to be to be honest, uh, it's smarter to incrementally add weight. Sure. Um, you know, you don't necessarily. I mean, I never did with a clients. I never trained clients where I'm like, oh, looks like you're stronger. Let's add fifty pounds. Like I never did that. I did yeah. that to myself because. You know, I'm a, you know, as a trainer, I train other people better than I train myself. So, but yeah, it, either one can definitely have value. Um, do the one that you haven't been doing. So, if you tend to add larger amounts, go to the fractional uh, adding of the weight. If you tend to do the fractional one, which is probably more rare, then I'd say uh, go the other direction. All right. Next question is from Caffeine and Counseling. If someone is having a hard time losing body fat, how do they determine if it's due to a slow metabolism or just overeating? Okay, so first of all, if you are gaining weight uh, or not burning body fat, you are eating more than you're burning. So it's it's technically all overeating, okay? So let's get right. that out. Now, that being said, okay, can you change the the energy balance by speeding up your metabolism. In other words, can you get your body to burn more calories on its own uh, by doing, you know, by by uh, uh, using certain strategies to speed up your metabolism? Yes, you can. So, I want to be clear there because uh, you only gain body fat if you're eating more calories than you're burning. Now, if you're not burning very many calories, it doesn't take much to do that, but you're still eating more um, than you're burning. The strategies to getting your metabolism to speed up all include lifting weights. All of them. Now, there's there's other things you can do. Get good sleep. You can you know slowly increase your calories over time. That tends to speed up the metabolism a little bit. Um, but you lift weights always, um, and because lifting weights tells the body to build muscle, it also sends a signal to the body. And this is something that I, I we've never really talked too much about on the podcast. It actually tells your body to become less efficient with calories. Mm -hmm. um, we see this, and it's interesting when you look at studies. You find that the the body becomes less. If, in other words, it, it it doesn't conserve calories quite as much. It burns more through heat because 
it doesn't need it, it doesn't feel like it needs to. Resistance training tends to promote that. So when you look at somebody who gains a pound of muscle but they're burning 500 more calories a day, one pound of muscle, you know, on its face isn't burning 500 more calories. But the signal that told the body to build that pound of muscle does tell the body to become less efficient with calories, which causes a faster metabolism. Well, wouldn't you first want to look at, you know, if you're overeating? I mean, that would just make the most sense before you go into like, well, I have a slow metabolism, like, and go in that direction. Uh, Just to really know very specifically, like, I've been tracking, I know what my maintenance is, I know that, you know, just by manipulating, like, this amount of calories up, you know, I could see how that affects my composition and then, you know, sort of, like, go from there and then see, okay, obviously the weight training is going to have the best effect you know on your metabolism and you're going to go in that direction but at least assess that first well i mean like sal said if if you're if you're putting on body fat uh regardless if you are you your metabolism is slow you think it's slow or not slow you're you're overeating right so you're overeating for where your current metabolism is at and really nobody knows the answer to whether it's slow to you or not like if you find yourself eating very low calorie and still putting body fat on well then and you're not satisfied with the calories you're consuming and you would like to eat more well then sure it's slow for you it's slower than you would like it so work towards building it up but if you're putting body fat on just because you had a crazy day where you had 12 alcoholic drinks and swung by Taco Bell and had 20 tacos the, the at the end of the night and you put on some body fat afterwards like that because you ate 6,000 calories. Don't that blame day. it on your metabolism. Mm, right. <laughs> it's, not, it's not the metabolism's fault. But I mean, you are the one that decides whether you think your metabolism is uh, slow or not. If you're putting body fat on, you're overeating. Whether Regardless if that's 900 calories you're eating from that or it's you know, 6,000 calories, you, you, you won't put body fat on unless you're over consuming yeah. them where, where the, where your metabolic rate is. Now, now at. here's where the value of tracking comes in because, uh, nine out of 10 people that I've ever worked with underestimate their calories. Okay. Almost every single time somebody will say, Oh, I'm eating around this much or I'm not eating too much. And then I have them track and be like, actually, uh, you're eating 3,500 calories a day on average. Uh, why? Because yeah, you had a couple low calorie days, but then Saturday and Sunday, you ate pizza and you went out and you did this and that. And when we add it all up, it averages out to quite a bit. So track, track your food, see how many calories you're actually consuming. You may be surprised. You may be shocked. You may think you have a, I can't tell you how many times I had clients tell me that slow metabolisms, but in reality, they just ate too much. They just ate a shitload of calories. I'm right. like, well, you're actually eating a lot more th- than you think. All right. All right. Next question is from Alexandria. Is not eating right after I work out slowing down my progress? Probably you still, not. You still picked all these macro questions, yeah. guy. Hey, man. You talked it, it all has, sh- It has a, a, a you know a workout component to <laughs> it. You talked all this <laughs> shit, and then you had to pick all these macro questions. No, I spread it out because I know you guys love talking about it. You know what I mean? I was like trying to include you guys. Like I being could have handled inclusive. an all-training conversation today. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. I don't no, know. Um, no, not really. You're not really slowing down any progress. It, the, there, you know, there's studies that show if you eat after you work out, it speeds up the you know, part of the recovery process, which would be to replenish energy that you've expended in the muscles. That's part of the recovery process. But it, but, but it really doesn't matter when you eat. If you eat later on, you still replenish those yeah. energy stores. Really, it only va- the only value in, that goes into eating right after you work out is if you plan on working out again later in the day. Right. Mm. And you need to replenish those you energy stores. You know, this, I, I blame the bodybuilding community for this one. And this was something that I remember when I was- The compete- anabolic window. Is key, key right. Hand or, no, yeah. totally. And I, and I remember when I was competing that this was like one of the easiest strategies I used to lean out. So like I would work towards Building my metabolism up and consuming five, six thousand calories, and then now when time now it's time to cut for a show six, eight weeks out or so, and I start coming the other direction. One of my favorite things to start to restrict calories is post workout. I just stopped eating that meal, and I would try and stretch myself for as long as I could until the next until I was like, I gotta eat. It's been mm-hmm. a, you know it's been a couple hours after my workout. Now I want to eat. Who cares about this this anabolic window that everybody hypes up like it's that important? What I know is that when I go into a workout, especially when I'm following a diet where I'm already eating on average a lower amount of calories, and then I go work out, I've completely depleted my glycogen stores. And if I'm still walking around, I go home from the workout, I shower, I'm doing things around. Now you're fat burning. Right. My body is now going to switch over to metabolizing fat as a source of energy because I've already tapped into all my my stored energy. So 
I used to look at it like, wow, this is a great opportunity for me to just stay busy, keep going through my day, restrict from eating for a couple more hours to maximize the fat burning. But even effect. that doesn't matter unless you're in a calorie deficit. Even well, that, right. if you're in a calorie deficit, then yeah, you're burning. If, it, if you're not, even if you wait after your workout, it doesn't make a big difference. It literally, really doesn't matter unless you, again, you're working out multiple times a day and you need to replenish some energy to have another workout. Now, why is this something that's pushed so hard in the fitness space? Why is this something that I even believed? Because they for, want you to take your product right then. That's it. What they did is with very brilliant marketing is they they ritualized the consumption of protein bars and, and protein shakes. And what they did is they said, hey, if you if you eat this right after your workout, you recover faster, build more muscle, you have to do it. Then they knew if they pressured that and pushed that, um, people would believe it and ritualize it, and they did. They sold way more products as a result of that uh, that, that false belief. But no, it's it's because again, post workout, you're 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 far less likely to eat a home cooked meal. Yeah. More likely to have the shake that you saved. You're in right, your- though. I mean, it. The only time it's important is if because of you not eating right after you work out, you're missing your macro targets. That's it. Right. So if if. And that's where I would say, yes, this has a lot of value. Yeah, because you need to eat a R- little, you know. Right. Like you, I mean, if your body needs 150 grams of protein every day, it needs 150 grams of protein, regardless if it's getting right after a workout or not. So if, and if now, like in my case, when I decided to start skipping that meal, you know, if that now all of a sudden I lose 30, 40 grams a day that I, and I don't get that made up somewhere else in my meals, well then yes, that could affect my progress. Mm-hmm. But you know, all I would do is now my other five meals that I had today, instead of having six ounces, I'm having seven or eight ounces of meat. And that would make up for that difference of now skipping that meal and not getting that protein right afterwards. The, the difference of missing that anabolic window is so negligible. It's not even worth, I think, paying any attention to it. And in fact, like I said, I found it uh, right after a really hard workout. I'm not starving. Mm -hmm. It takes personally myself, like it takes me a while to come down before I even want to eat. It was only in my early years of personal training. And when I fell for that same myth where I used to like pound a shake right afterwards, because I thought I had to get into this anabolic window. But I found for leaning out, for leaning out, it was like one of the best strategies was for me to now. What skip about that. what about gut health? I know you guys like interviewed a specialist on this. In terms of like the timing of that, I mean, when out, right after you work out and your body's inflamed, and then you're adding like certain types of food that might add to that like inflammation in, in excess. Well, that's the irony. The irony is eating right after you work out could contribute to gut health issues because. When you're working out and pushing yourself, you do get uh, localized inflammation on the areas that you work out, but you also get the systemic rise in inflammation in the whole body, including the gut, uh, including the gut. By the way, it's you know when you push yourself really hard and you throw up, um, or if you know it's it's part of your, your body doesn't want to do both, right? It wants to not have to digest while you're exerting yourself. So the gut gets inflamed along with the rest of the body. Now you're gonna throw food at it or a shake at it. Inflammation uh, increases the, the the odds that you're going to get what's called uh, intestinal permeab- hyperpermeability, meaning that food particles, protein particles, pass through the gut and the intestine when they shouldn't mm-hmm. into the bloodstream. Your body makes them invaders. Yeah, and your body point. exactly it reacts like it's a foreign invader, develops an immune response, and this may be why that protein shake that you've been having post workout for the last five years all of a sudden gives you gas and diarrhea and other issues. You've developed an intolerance to it. You've actually trained your body to become intolerant to it by having it right after your your hard workout. Now, I remember when we we discussed that, and I kind of afterwards, I remember digging into that because I found that very fascinating. And the likelihood of that is really small. Uh, Although, if you're somebody who trains like CrossFit or you train, (coughs) excuse me, really high intense, different story. Your average person who works out in the gym that does a sixty minute maps workout or whatever the the intensity level of that you're not getting you're the the st- yeah you're not getting the effects right. of like but if you already have gut issues <clears throat> yeah uh, probably not a good idea to right right to not ideal and you're, and again you're you're splitting hairs on the the actual benefits that all the science supports of doing that mm-hmm. for insulin spike reasons and all that bullshit. Next question is from Romain Tyler. Since repetitive movement injuries are so common in the construction world. What kind of lower back work would you suggest to keep our back strong and healthy for years to come? Now, you, when you look at the lower back, you look at the spine, the lumbar spine, it's not just the muscles of the lower back that support the spine. It's all the muscles that surround the spine, which include 
the muscles of the core, the obliques, internal obliques, the abs, the transverse abdominis, the muscles underneath both those, uh, all the pelvic floor muscles, all the muscles that surround the lower back support the the lumbar spine. So what should you do? Um, you should do exercises that strengthen them through full ranges of motion. You should do exercises that strengthen them as they stabilize. So a good example, a simple exercise that helps you strengthen stabilization of the core would be like a plank uh, or, you know, farmer walks is another good example. One, one arm farmer hollow walks. Hollow body. Yeah, hollow body. That's a great exercise. You want to do rotational movements with like like cable chops. And then you want to do counter rotational movements. Uh, this is where you're you're resisting your body's ability to rotate. You want to really strengthen the entire surround the whole area surrounding the lumbar spine to help protect your spine. Well, along those lines too, I'm going to give you some generic advice too because I've trained a lot of construction workers and uh, two areas that I, I tended to just spend a lot of time focusing on to, to help them: uh, hip mobility and training your abs and core. Uh, obviously core and abs is, it's the, uh, antagonist muscle to your low back, right? So it's what supports the low back. So you, if you have low back issues or you have a weak low back, uh, strengthening the, the opposing side is, is going to be a great strategy period. So having strong core, strong abs is, is, is a must for somebody like this. And then, uh, you know, a lot of times low back pain, people don't re realize too, just it comes from the lack of mobility in, in the hips. And because the hips get so locked up and tight, it pulls on that low back because it's all interconnected. And so I found I had a lot of success when I got a client to really open up their whole hip, open up their hips by doing exercises like the 90-90 or like Doug, Doug's favorite, the Frogger and doing moves like that, that really promote a good hip mobility and then strengthen the, the core to support it. Uh, and then, of course, the things that the, the boys were alluding to, too, I think are very important to strengthen and have a strong back. But a lot of times the the chronic pain that we feel, and this is near and dear to my to me, uh, like the the pain that was from my low back was it was it was it was more due to the uh, the lack of mobility that I had in my hips and then it was then pulling on my low back and causing yeah. that so M much like with the hip flexors like that's one of those things you got to make sure while doing those types of exercises that we're stimulating you know the abdominals the transverse abdominals we're not you know overemphasizing the hip flexors which are probably already uh, you know in a shortened position and you know being overly uh, uh, you know, like like underutilized and, and not not in an extended position very often. You wrote, didn't you write a really good low back pain guide? Yeah, we have one at mindpumpfree.com, yeah. and yep. it talks about uh, some of this stuff. Here's something else: um, start to change the technique uh, that you use at work. Um, you know, working with I never did this as a trainer until I owned my own studio and I had a physical therapist that worked in there, and she was exceptional. I learned quite a bit from her. And I would see her training her clients who worked in you know these types of jobs, and she would definitely do the stuff I talked about earlier, strengthening the core, you know, stabilization exercises, counter rotation, all that kind of stuff. But then she would also work on their technique at work, and what she found was, or what I actually observed was, oftentimes their technique was bad because yeah. of what you said, uh, poor mobility, poor. Yeah. Like here's an easy one, poor hamstring mobility. Okay, so if your hamstrings are really really tight, every time you bend over you're going to really round your lower back and your, your hips are going to be tucked underneath you. Great point. So she would work on their hamstring flexibility and mobility and then their technique changed. Now mm -hmm. when they bent over, it was more at the hips, less at the lumbar spine. So that's something else you can you can pay attention to. As far as pain relief is concerned or, or speeding up your ability to recover um, from lots of repetitive work, stretching after work makes a big difference. Sauna use can help, um, and uh, red light therapy. Red light therapy on your low back um, has can can will likely speed up the recovery process uh, that's happening with those muscles. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our guides. There's including that low back guide that Adam referenced. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Adam at mindpumpadam, Justin at mindpumpjustin, and me at mindpumpsal.